Welcome back. Welcome back. It's draft night. Relas on Sports Talk episode 87. Check us out on the YouTube channel. All podcasts. Facebook. My man Tommy runs. And the merchandise. You know I had to wear the merchandise in my squad. The Washington football team. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully we can get some luck and get some good draft picks, which we usually don't do well at. You know what I'm saying? Which is the reason why we're one of the worst franchises. <laughs> but then we're going to talk about some NBA playoffs. And we know we're going to talk about those Celtics who swept away the Nets. And one of the biggest fans of the Celtics, my man, Mr. Matthew, who's my administrator at work. And one of my new subscribers to the show. So big ups to you, Mr. Matthew. How far can the Celtics go? Drama in Philly. Mrs. Stars returning. The best playoff dunk ever the other night? We're going to ask. We're going to ask. And what's going to help What's gonna help the Nets? Not that I really care, because I don't like them super teams anyway. But, of course, we're starting off with the draft. The draft is already started about an hour and so. Um, so I'm not going to dig too, too deep into it, because everybody's got their mind. Which makes this one of the best drafts, is nobody even knows who the number one pick is really going to be. All, all through everything, it was supposed to be Aiden Hutchins. Aiden Hutchins was supposed to be the guy. And then you saw some sauce talk. Then you talk, you heard some Thibodeau. Then you heard some Walker. And I think it's going to be Trayvon. I think Trayvon's going to be the number one pick for the Jaguars. I still say it should be Hutchinson because he's pure. He's groomed. He's done that. You know what I'm saying? Trayvon, you look at the upside with him. You look at the upside, and he is a freak. I ain't going to lie. He is a freak. But um, I would have took Hutchinson if I was Jacksonville because you need s- stability. You don't need what could be's in Jacksonville because you always getting these what could be's and then they turn out to be not W's. You know what I'm saying? You ain't getting no wins out there. So I would have done that, but hey, I'm not an NFL GM. So take take your pick, whatever. Um, intriguing, intriguing, intriguing because so many teams need so many things and the quarterbacks don't run the draft. Usually the quarterbacks run the draft and it's like quarterbacks one, two, da da da. Stand up. No, we got we got my man Malik Malik from Liberty. And then you got Matt Corral, Pickett, Sam Howe, and you got Ritter. So you got names, but they not like name names. So I'm sitting here like, who's gonna reach for one of these? I mean, you look at certain teams that could do it, especially like the Giants, who just now did not pick up Daniel Jones's fifth year option. So what's that tell you? Their backup quarterback is Tyrod Taylor. I don't think he's long-term the solution for the Giants. I don't think Giant fans would, would appreciate that. I got to give a shout-out to my moms back there, right there. Love her. Anyway, Giants, this is big for you. These are important, important picks for you, Giants, because y'all been getting y'all been getting draft picks and failing like, like my Washington team. So here's the question, though. Here's the question. If you're not going to give Jones his fifth year, why'd you even bring him back anyway? Why didn't you go out there and go grab a Baker Mayfield? Why didn't you go try to do something like that? He's still there. He's still there. Baker Mayfield's still there. Do I want him in New York? No, because I think Baker Mayfield, Mayfield can still play. I just took him over Carson Wentz, tell you the truth. Um, but, yeah, the Giants, it's going to be weird what they do. I can't wait. That's what's making it intriguing about the draft. Nothing's coming out. You don't know how it's going to shake up. You don't know who's going to pick what that could change everybody's draft. You know, because the Giants fifth. Now they're not keeping their quarterback, probably. So are they going to take a quarterback with the fifth pick and risk messing up again? Or are you going to get one of these elite talents? You know what I'm saying? You talk about sauce. That quarterback is, whew. And then Stingley. I think the New York teams, the Jets and the Giants, who's at four or five, one of them corners is going to one of them markets. And I think the Giants need a big market name. I mean, I know they when they drafted Saquon Barkley, it was a big market name, but it's a running back. I feel like running backs are going to generate the things. I mean, look at Dallas. Look what Diggs did for Dallas. I know Parsons is the man, but Diggs brought a little oomph to him too. You know, and staying in the same division, the Eagles. They didn't go after Watson with all these extra picks and actually gave away a pick to get another two more next year. You know what I'm saying? So you got 15 and 18 Eagles. We know what the Eagles need. The Eagles need receiver help. 
You know what I'm saying? They need corner help. And I think they might get both with those picks. I hope they don't because I don't want to see the Eagles too good, obviously. But so the Eagles, I think they're going to be looking at those two things. And I hope Stingley, I think Sauce is going to get picked before Stingley. So I hope Stingley don't fall to either one of them. Um, so the Eagles, big situations. Do they package those together to go up and get an elite talent? Or do they settle back and just get the best market? Because there's other wide receivers. And I think you, if you don't get Drake London, if you don't get Jamison Williams or the boy from Olave, Olave from Ohio State, there's other receivers, especially from smaller market schools like Western Michigan and different schools. Arkansas has got a wide receiver out there that's killing. So I feel like if you don't have to get one of those. But the cornerback situation, I think Stingley and Sauce, it's so hard to find cornerback help or safety help. That's why I think my boy Kyle from Notre Dame is going to be a high pick. So the Eagles got – it's going to be tough for the Eagles if they're going to stay at 15 or 18 to see what talent drops to them. Because I think somebody's talent is going to drop. The Packers, hey, you don't pick the 28. Aaron Rodgers needs wide receiver help. Good thing for you that there is wide receivers out there that's going to be around that time. Um, two ones. You know, you need to use those. You need to make it happen. Uh, the Panthers, I don't know what's up with the Panthers. I can't say I'm sticking with Sam Darnold. And are they going to trade anybody from their team? Sam Darnold is not the answer. You got the sixth pick. If no quarterbacks are gone by then, will you take a shot at any of them quarterbacks at six? I just think that's too rich for my blood. I think it's too rich for my blood. Because when you look at the quarterbacks, when you look at Ritter, you know, Corral, whatever how you pronounce it, Sam Howell from UNC, Pickett with small hands, and Willis, nobody jumped off the table. And I look at him, I'm like, what is special about you that I can't coach you up or I can't surround you with talent to do something special? And if ain't nothing popping off like that, then I'm not, I can't take you at five or six. But the only thing intriguing is Willis. Willis has got that extra thing about him, that intangible that you can't teach the way he can maneuver his body and run that entices people to think maybe so. So I've seen him in the mock drafts as far as top five, and I've seen him all the way at the bottom of the first round. That's why this draft is going to be crazy. And teams that draft well, I think, are going to make big jumps for next year, which is bad for my team because we don't draft well. So I'm scared of the, I'm scared of the Eagles. I'm scared of the Giants. I'm scared of the, not the Giants, the Cowboys, the, the Steelers, teams like that. I'm like, watch them steal everybody out here. But there's defensive ends, pass rushers everywhere. There's offensive linemen out there. Wide receivers galore. We got a few running backs out there, but I can't take a running back in the first round. That's not like amazing out here. I can't do it. Can't do it. So the next team I'm looking at is the Chiefs, but they don't pick. They pick 29 to 30. Do they try to package those together to go get one of these Drake Londons or Jamison Williams? I hope not. I hope not because that could be huge out there. That could be huge out there. Um, it's a lot of teams with multiple picks. The Lions got two, two and 32 Texans, three and 13 Jets, four and 10. You know what I'm saying? The Jets can make moves out here having four and 10 because you have, you don't have to jump at four at four. You take the best available talent for your roster at 10. You might be able to say, I might take, I might go after one of these Drake Blunders. I might go after these Jamison Williams or whatever you think you might need. So the draft is going to be crazy. Seahawks sitting there at number nine with Drew Lockett quarterback. If you're not going to pull the trigger to try to go get Baker Mayfield, you're hoping that Malik Willis is there at nine because you cannot sell this to your fan base to take Corral, Pickett, Howell, or Renner. I'm sorry. You can't do it. At least you can sell Baker Mayfield being a former number one pick, and Baker still got a lot of boxy to him. I can't see the Seattle Going into the season with True Lock and Geno Smith, I can't see it. But if they do, good for you. You'll be lasting your division. Sorry. I can't see it. So, Washington, my team, 11. I don't know what I want to do. I can't see us taking – if a quarterback falls. The only one I would be like, okay, I'll take a chance would be Malik Willis. But the wide receivers also, man, we need wide receiver help. We need corner help and we need safety help. I think both corners are going to be gone. If Stingley's still there at 11, you're taking Stingley. Him, 
My man Kyle's not going to be there. But if Stingley's there at 11, you better take Stingley. You better take Stingley because you can get wide receivers later. If you have to take a wide receiver, it comes down to London or Williams. I mean, London's that big body, that big body athlete, Antoine, Antoine Bolden type, Jameson Williams, that speech or whatever. You got to smooth it over with Terry McLaurin first, but then I think you will get that Drake London. You get that big body from Jake London to go go with um, the other receivers that you have in the room because Curtis Samuels is going to be still there too. But we'll see, man. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued, but I'm nervous because Washington does not draft well. Ch- taking Chase was a big pick, but – I don't know. So the NFL draft is about to be on. We don't know what's going to happen with Debo. Debo was the headlines of everything. Where's Debo? Is somebody going to trade for Debo before the draft? It's going to be harder to do it after the draft, I would think. I would think. But I'm looking at the Jets at number four. If you want Debo, you give up the number four pick. Debo can go there. You get the number four pick, Jets. What's the 49ers going to do with that pick at number four? What would the 49ers need? That's what makes it exciting. I can't wait. Can't wait to see the draft. Um, the draft's always better. Every team thinks that they can get that steal. They can get that Tom Brady in the sixth round. They can get this magical player. That's what makes it fun. But draft time's going to be great. Um, it's the unknown. We don't know. But let's get to what we do know. We do know. We do know that the Bucks have just beaten the Bulls. And Giannis did. If you watch previous shows, I said, I thought the Bulls was going to win. I thought when Middleton went out, they were going to be done. I did not have a clue that Grayson Allen from Duke would show up and turn into J.J. Reddick. Grayson Allen? I mean, maybe it's just because of the, the hate that I have for Duke and the hate that I have for Christian Leitner, who is the epitome of Duke, would show up. But hey, Middleton, they say Middleton's going to be out at least two more weeks or maybe even longer. So I don't think that he's going to be there for this next series against them Celtics. I don't know. The Bulls, the Bulls, they had the best record with Lonzo Ball. They had the fourth best offense with Lonzo Ball. They had the fifth best, he was the best, fifth best three point shooter. People are sleeping on Lonzo Ball, Brandon. <laughs> but LaMelo Ball is that guy, I think. But Lonzo is a ship. Cat. He can carry a ship a little bit. He ain't got to be the star, but he's going to keep it all even and make everybody else better. That's what Lonzo does. That's what Lonzo does. LaMelo's going to be somebody that's going to go out there and win you a game if he needs to, you know, by himself. But the Bulls' future going forward, I think they're all right. I think they are all right. All right. Um, I'm just looking at I'm just looking at the stuff they talk about. They talk about trades, you know what I'm saying? It looked like the Steelers are trying to go up to 12 to get Malik Willis in front of the Vikings pick. I hope they don't have to hate the Steelers. Anyway, but the Bulls, I think they're okay. I think they're okay. I wish we'd have had DeRozan. But uh, the Bucks, Giannis. What can you say? Giannis, the best player in the game. Best player in the game. Period. The Warriors and Nuggets. <laughs> we saw. <laughs> hey, the Nuggets battled hard. Both teams played hard. Nuggets, y'all did okay. And you're underhanded. Underhanded Nuggets, I give it up to you. But you know who I give it up to is your coach. I give it up to your coach. I think you have a heck of a coach, and he prepared y'all well. The Joker is – okay, look, I'm going to give it up. Brand, Tommy, I'm going to give y'all some love right now, Brandon and Tommy. I'm going to do it on this show because tomorrow's show on Friday night, I might not give y'all as much love. The Joker is a star player. I'm, the Joker is a star player. I'm just saying, we're going to have an argument on tomorrow's show because Jason Tatum is the guy over you – know, I'm sorry. Tatum is that dude, both sides of the ball. But good job, Joker. Good job. Good job. You lost 4-1 and made it close. The Warriors, it's scary because they're just coming together, playing as a unit with this roster. They're just coming together. They're, yo, they're playing together, putting lineups together. Y'all forget Andrew Wiggins was an all-star. And then you got Clay come, came back. Draymond's getting back in shape, doing his thing. And that uh, boy, the baby face assassin, Steph Curry. I'm just saying, man, I, I think that they're ready to go to the finals. I think that I think the Celtics 
I mean, the Warriors are ready to go to the final. I keep talking about the Celtics because I got to get it in because they're exciting to me. And I enjoyed the fact that the Nets got swept. I wanted to lose so bad. I wasn't expecting a sweep, but I'll take it. And remember the old mantra, defense wins championships? Well, this might be the year that that happens in the NBA because the Celtics defense with the defensive player of the year, Marcus Smart, just swept the Nets, who was Vegas's pick, to win it all. Even when they were lower seed, the lowest seed like that, Vegas still had them like that because you had Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Team ball is what it is. And even when players aren't out there, they have confidence in each other. They have com- I saw guys along the bench. I had no idea. There's a little white point guard out there. We were looking like, there he is, get it, make the shots, hustling, doing things. They believe in each other. And that's crazy. And you know what I think it is? It's coach. Their coach came from whose who's tree? Coach Pop. Adoku came from the Spurs with Coach Pop. And I think that's a huge thing. Plus, he was on the net staff last year, so he might have knew a thing or two. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I think I think the Celtics, I mean, if you think second half of the season, they were like, they were the hottest team, man. They were the hottest team. Um, so watch out for them. And I'll tell you what, right before our eyes, right before our eyes, Jason Tatum, if you don't know, now you know. I already knew because I wanted to draft him. Kobe Bryant said draft Jason Tatum, not Lonzo Ball. When Magic was the gym. And Magic said, no, nah, because he was a point guard. He saw flashy point guards for Lonzo Ball. Kobe said, no. Jason Tatum's got that gene. I trained with him. And we see what happens now. Now he's on the rival Celtics. And I still love Jason Tatum. He, and he went to Duke. He went to Duke and he's a Celtic. And I love Jason Tatum. That just tells you how much I love him because I hate the Celtics. And I really hate Duke. But he's the man. He plays both sides of the ball. I love it. That's what made me fall in love with PG, too, Paul George. I'm just saying. So, on the thing, we on the last Raw episode, I was saying top five. He ain't top five. He ain't done it. Is he top five now? Is he top five now? Is he better than Djokovic now? Is he ranked higher? We'll talk about it on tomorrow's show. But I'm telling you, I'll take Tatum right now. I'll put him up against almost anybody in the NBA. Him and y'all, I'm telling you, I would put him right there. And Kenny Smith on, on, the, on the network, what do he say? Because Shaq was like, well, where do you put Tatum now? Where do you put him? Kenny Smith said, I got him number two in the world behind Giannis. And I'm looking at it like, I might do the same thing. Brandon's going to be like, Luca, look, I don't trust you. Y'all just lost to Utah when you came back, dude. I want to hear your mouth like Utah. <laughs> Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum, dude. I've been trying to tell y'all. Jason Tatum and them Celtics. So we looking at it. We looking at it. Celtics, Bucks next round. <laughs> must see TV, yo. This is going to be must see TV. Must see TV. And as much as I like Giannis and as much as I – uh, like him for not being a super team and being a, a low market and all this going on. I think the Celtics are going to win. I just think the defense that they play is just going to be too much for him, you know. It's going to remind me when Toronto had Kawhi Leonard and they came up with that system to stop him from getting in the play. I think it's going to be kind of similar to that, yo. And nothing against Giannis, but if you don't have Middleton out there to help you out there create one-on-one, I just don't trust Grayson Allen. And the boy from the boy from Notre Dame, Conahy or whatever. I just can't see them coming through. Drew Holiday stepping up. Drew Holiday actually is better than what I thought he would be. You know what I'm saying? I know he's an all-star with the Hornets back in the day, but I don't know, man. I just can't see it. I think it's Celtics. And honestly, I think it's Celtics Warriors finals. Imagine that. Imagine that. Steph going against Marcus Smart. Clay Thompson going against Jalen Brown. Jason Tatum against Draymond. I mean, I think that would be <laughs> must-see TV. I think it's must-see TV. I hope that works out. If not, we'll see what happens. As long as the Nets are out and Philadelphia's out, because I hate James Harden. But so what's going to happen with the Nets? What's going to happen with the Nets? 
First of all, remember when I was talking about the coaching staffs of different teams? Steve Nass cannot coach. He can't coach. Whether they're not letting him coach because the egos of Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, or he just ain't a coach. He ain't a coach. He never coached before. I know they say point guards are like the, the attachment from the head coach when they play and all that. I don't care. Jason Kidd, he can coach. Tyron Lue, point guard, he can coach. I don't think Jason, I don't think, I don't think Steve Nash is ready to coach yet, or at least not coach them. Maybe they're not letting him coach because the way Kyrie Irving was talking about, he said him, KD, and the ownership, they need to figure out the roster and they need to do all these things. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're the man. Who are you? Who are you, dude? Who are you? Like Barkley said, Kyrie driving the bus. Kyrie's driving the bus. Kyrie thinks he's the man. You're like a part-time man. We don't know whether he's going to be there or not. We don't know whether he's going to be there or not. Something might make you mad and say, oh, I need to sit down. I can't play for a few games. I'm upset. You know, oh, I, you know, I don't know. I don't want to play this game. Or I don't know. They can't nobody count on you. And they're about to sign you to an extension of all this money. Because you have to. I mean, because it's Kyrie Irving. And he knows that. He knows that you can't count on him. Kevin Durant, if he wants to win, has to play like he did in game four. He played like LeBron did against Golden State that year when Kevin Love, Kyrie got hurt. He was out there trying everything he can. And that's why I like, I was like, man, if LeBron played like that his whole career, people would not dog him for being a punk. Kevin Durant was out there. Yeah, he was getting deed up. He was getting frustrated, but he wouldn't stop. And he kept trying to will his team to win. He's got to take over that bus. Scoot over, Kyrie. Get, get yourself back. I'm driving it now. Is he going to do it? I don't know. I don't know if it's built inside of him. Because it reminds me of like when he was with Westbrook. Westbrook was driving the bus, but Kevin was the man. I mean, Kevin Durant was the man. Game on the line. He don't even look to throw the ball to Kevin Durant. He's going he gonna to do some crazy stuff like Westbrook usually does. And I like Westbrook because he plays with heart. I like heart players. But Kevin Durant, at some point in your career, dude, you're 30 something years, you got to stand in there and be like, look, this me now. I'm Batman. You Robin. Get back, son. I'll let you know. And that's what he did in the last game, game four. I mean, Kyrie got some points, whatever, whatever, but he was the one dictating everything. And he has to be like that because when's your window going to close? When's your window going to close, Kevin Durant? I don't know. I don't know if I can trust him. Because Kyrie thinks he's untouchable. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to get the vaccine, yo. I'm going to just play away games. I don't care. He don't care. Don't let an election show up. Don't let something happen in the news he don't like. He might need to take some time off. Care? That's my hard butt wanted to get out of there. I don't know. I think time's running out. Kevin Durant, you need to just say, this is my team and build it around you, yo. You're that good. You are that good. I don't know. But, um. Miami and the Hawks, Miami fought, finished them off. What is the health like of Jimmy Butler in them, though? I don't know. If they're going to miss some time, I'm nervous against Philadelphia. If Philadelphia makes it, if Philadelphia wins tonight, there's three games tonight, game six. And I think there's going to be no more game sevens. I think every team that's up 3-2 is going to win. Just put it out there right now. 76ers will win. Phoenix is going to win. And I think uh, the Grizzlies will win. I don't think there's going to be no more. I think it's going to be over. I mean, Dallas is going in also. Actually, you know what? The Grizzlies Timberwolves might go game seven, but I'll get to that one. Um, Miami, solid squad. Solid squad under the foundation of Pat Riley, Eric Spolster. I think they're going to the Eastern Conference Finals. I can, I guarantee it. I don't think Philadelphia can make it there. They argue with each other. They were up 3-0. Oh, you should have swept them. But now we talk about you got Doc, Doc Rivers in the media talking about, oh, don't make fun of me because I've blown these leads. And, oh, look at the whole picture. Oh, look at the whole picture. If you're good enough to get the lead 3-1, you're good enough to win. Don't blame it now because you lost three different times, the most in NBA history. Don't get mad now because somebody's calling it out. Oh, well, Chris Paul was hurt on one leg. Oh, did you see that team that I was coaching against the number one seed? Huh? I don't care. You won three games. So you obviously did something right. Win that fourth. Win the fourth. Stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. And y'all made this trade to get James Harden. What y'all got? 
Is he just passing the ball now? Did he lose his step? And you were supposed to give him a max contract of 200 so many. Art, what is going on? Philadelphia, I don't know. You better win this game tonight. You better win this game tonight. Because if you don't, <sighs> if you don't win this game tonight, you talk about pressure. <laughs> game seven with Harden's flunkiness in the playoffs and with MB's luck that's happened to him and then Coach Rivers and stuff. Oh, Lord. You better win. You better win this game, bro. Wow. I don't know. We got MB stuff, Harden being Harden. I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like they're going to get smashed. Phoenix and the Pelicans. I was sitting here like, okay, I'm going to give it to you again, Tommy. Yeah. Phoenix, what DeAndre Ayton was killing. DeAndre Ayton's killing. And also what I saw was Chris Paul showing you why he is one of the elite point guards, as old as he is, it don't matter. He's a leader of men. He's a leader of men. He knows where to put people in position to win. Chris Paul's that kind of a guy. He wills people. He wills people. So we look at we look at we look at Phoenix. And the first, another thing I jump out, I told you about coaching because I, I love coaching myself. So I respect people that coach well. Monty Williams, who I wanted to be the Lakers coach. I wanted to be. And what did he say? He said, Lakers, I'm not interested. Because he knew it was a junk show. With LeBron, he don't want none of them problems. I want to coach people that want to be coached to win. I don't want no drama. I don't want no crybaby. I don't want no nothing. And, and look where he's at now. Monty Williams, hell of a coach. Hell of a coach. Can the Pelicans win game six at home? They could. They got B.I.B.I. B.I. And then you got C.J. McCollum, who's got a gene in him, too. But Booker's back. Booker's back. Is it going to be rusty? Maybe. Could could the Pelicans win game six? They could. But I think if it goes to a game seven, Phoenix will finish it off. Good job to the Pelicans for showing up. Way to show showcase your talent. Way to showcase some of the people that have on your team that other, other people might not even know about. You know, great job. We put it to game seven. I, I appreciate that, and I respect that. The, the best the best series in the NBA right now, in the NBA right now, is the Grizzlies and Timberwolves. The Timberwolves have blown another lead. I told you before, I thought, hey, when the game went to bed, came back, they were that What? What? It's coaching. How does the coach allow this? How do your coach allow this? Um, how does your coach allow this? Now, Memphis is coach. His last name is Jenkins, so... So he's doing things right. But for the Timberwolves, Anthony Edwards is a guy. He's one of them dudes. When he hit that shot at the corner at the end of the game, it looked like the game winner. It looked like the game winner. He's that guy that's got that gene in him, yo, Anthony Edwards. Um, The big cat, the big cat, I call him pussy cat because you're a front runner. When y'all winning, you like to clap. You like to talk. When y'all losing, you meet me out. You're whack. You're wimpy, and you got LeBronish tendencies. You lucky you got Anthony Edwards that got Kobe tendencies, because you got LeBron tendencies. And I'm tired. I'm and I never liked you anyway. I always thought you were wimpy and weak. Um, and you just don't have it. But I tell you who does have it. That boy Ja. That boy Ja, who I again will say I said take him instead of Zion Williamson. Yes, I did. But um, he was also a slow start, man. Slow, looking kind of, I don't know. But then the, the dunk, the dunk, the dunk, the dunk, the dunk is crazy. People say that was the best playoff dunk ever. Um, I did my research. I didn't have to go far because I knew who the number one dunk was. I knew who that was. But I still can't put Josh Dunk above, above Dr. J. Against my boys, the Lakers, when he just – Rocked, rocked it. Oh, Michael Cooper. You know what I'm saying? And then the number one dunk of all. Let me see if we can find the jersey up there. There he is right there. My man, Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp. What he did to (laughs) to Lister in the playoffs. Sean Kemp, the rain man. Don't get it twisted. He had the number one playoff dunk. As much as I love John Moran, as much as I loved his dunk, which being number three ain't bad. You behind Kemp and Dr. J? 
It was crazy. I probably watched it eight times, Joe. It was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. Um, so it was good. The biggest thing I see for the Timberwolves is y'all got too much Beverly going on. Patrick Beverly, yeah, he's one of those guys, spark plugs, that'll get people fired up and do things like that. But I feel like you're not playing enough. D'Lo's not getting enough of that. Because D'Lo can get, you, get other people the ball and can score better than Beverly. I know Beverly's got a few threes, whatever, whatever. But I feel like sometimes he gets in his own head. Or am I getting his own teammates head too much? I think he needs to be one of those just spark plug players. Put him in when you need some juice. I think not enough D'Lo, too much Beverly. Um, but it's exciting. It's exciting for the playoffs. I'm not even going to get to Dallas and Utah. You know, I think neither one of us can beat Phoenix, so I don't care. Luka is a star. Donovan Mitchell is a star. But both teams just look so flawed. Who cares? Phoenix is going to knock away with them, especially with Booker back. But exciting for the NBA. Think about think about the players. Think about the future of it. It's looking great. The only question I have, and I hope this doesn't happen. I wish there was a way that it wouldn't happen unless they come to my team, is the stars staying like Giannis. Giannis stayed in Milwaukee. Giannis could have went anywhere, got marketing deals, movie contracts. He could have went all these big cities and done all kinds of things. He stayed. Will Anthony Edwards stay in Minnesota? Will they know what to do to keep him? And people are going to say, well, the big cat stayed there. And I, I don't want to hear that because Andrew Wiggins got traded. And then we see Jimmy Butler was there. It didn't work out. So whatever. Anthony Edwards is going to be a guy more than any of those other guys. Tell you that right now. Will he wind up staying? Luca, a bit, well, I know he's in Dallas now, but will he stay long term like that? You know what I mean? Is is people going to stay in Utah? Are they going to say, is Donovan Mitchell going to stay there? You know what I mean? So we start looking at these teams and these small market teams. Are they going to be able to keep their players? Are the Pelicans going to be able to keep B.I.? Are they going to be able to keep these guys? I don't know. Is John Morant going to stay with the Memphis Grizzlies? Can they keep them there? If they can, if these small market teams can keep these star players, and the big market teams are already going to be able to get certain advantages anyway, the NBA can start getting parity like the NFL, which would be dynamic, dynamic. So I hope it's like that. I hope it gets it like that. Um, I can't wait. About to get off here. NFL draft will start in an hour. The first playoff game starting in 30 minutes. Like, subscribe, share. Appreciate all the love. Check me out if you want some merch. I can make any kind of thing you want. Anything. Just hit me up. Comment. Comment if you want me to talk about something you want to talk about. You know what I mean? Spread the love for me, man. Check us out tomorrow night. Red is a raw sports talk. With my boys, Tommy, Brandon, Shamai, Keith, Chris, all the fellas. And you never know, special guests might shop, show up all the time. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate the love, guys. Red Little Sports Talk, we out. Yeah.